Good evening and praise the Lord. Welcome to Restoration and Dominion Ministry. We thank you for taking time out. Those that are here in person and those that have joined us through Facebook Live and YouTube. We thank everybody for what they, for joining with us. There is something funny in the rehab session and we're joined right on in. I don't know if it's about me or yeah, something going on. <laughs> but we thank you for joining us in our rehab session. For those who are in person and those who are watching us through Facebook and YouTube, join us as we change the climate and environment with our declaration. On the count of three, join in with me. One, two, three. We, we decree and declare to speak light and not death. death. We will build and not condemn. Help not hinder. This atmosphere will be charged with faith and not fear. We are, we are the head and not the tail. We, we are above only and not beneath. And all things will be more than conquered through him who loves us. This domain is for restoration and dominion. Thank you for joining in with our declaration. We thank you so much for helping us set the atmosphere and environment for this rehab session. We thank all those that joined us with this rehab session. Thank you for taking time out. Those that are listening to us, sitting in your living room, in your room, your bedroom, wherever you are, thank you for joining us. Because in our rehab session, we are restoring, equipping, healing, and building. We are in a series right now called The Redo. We're dealing with restarting, recharging, refocusing, and renewing. This series was given to me to help encourage us to not be afraid of the redo, to not be afraid of starting over. So we thank everybody that's taking the time out to join us. We're going to do a brief review, and they're going to jump right in. Our series is The Redo, so we've already touched on restarting, recharging, and tonight we're on refocus. So we're going to do a review on recharging before we jump in. And last week we dealt with, oh, excuse me, our base scripture for this whole series is Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I will do a new thing, and I shall spring forth, shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. Quick review on recharge. As we said from the very beginning, re is a prefix, which means to go again, or go again, go back. It indicates repetition or to repeat. Redo means to do it over again, to repeat to do it differently, to revise, to reconstruct. And one of the things I am hitting on in every lesson that we do is for any individual not to be afraid of the redo or to start over. It's a blessing that you're able to start over. And that's what I want to keep reminding us. Many people feel intimidated. Many people feel ashamed that they didn't get it right. I'm back at this stage. I didn't go as far as I want. But that's why the Lord gave us this lesson, to encourage you to not be afraid of the redo. Last week, we dealt with recharge. And you have to understand, when you look at recharge, we told you it's time to get excited again. And when you look at the definition of recharge, it's to make a new attack or a new rush, a new blitz, drive, or push to regain energy or spirit. And that's what we want to remind you about last week's lesson before we start this one. Many of us need a new drive, a new push, whatever the situation is. A new drive, new energy, if it's in your marriage, your relationship, at your job, your business and ministry, many of us need a recharge or push. What happens is many of us forget that there's times where we need a break. The times where we need a vacation. The times that we need to sit back, analyze, evaluate. So there's nothing wrong with a redo or restart. But in this series, you have to recharge yourself. And let me go back and say it again. Sometimes the recharging maybe is a vacation. Sometimes the recharging is maybe sitting down and praying with your accountability partner. A girl's night. Um taking time out, a new project, a new hobby. But we need to recharge. We need to get reconnected. So we are encouraging everyone to do that, to get recharged, to make a new plan of attack, a new blitz, 
It's just like in football when they blitz the quarterback. They charge in and they rush. And that's what we need to understand, to remember and get that zeal, that excitement back. That excitement. What made you so excited to get started? Where, where did that utopia go? Where did that place that made you so excited that had you excited to get excited to be? That's what the region. Remember, we said zeal is a great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an object. Have you ever been in a place where there's something that you wanted, you saved, you stay focused, you sacrificed? Because why? You was excited. That's what you wanted. That's what you was your desire. Same thing. We need to get that zeal back and we got to understand that. Listen, we said last week in Galatians 5 and 7, it says you were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Let me be very clear in the best and simple way to say this. Life is a marathon, not always a 100-yard sprint. Sometimes slow and easy wins the race. This journey is not easy. And this journey is not always high and not always low. But we have to learn how to pace ourselves. Because we said this last week and the commercial said, I can't remember who, life comes at us really fast. And there's sometimes life comes so fast. Not that we forget that we are saved, that we're a Christian, that we're a child of God. But there's a lot that can be piled on us. And not from our own selves. So we have to understand that we have to, we said last week, we need to get connected again. Get your spiritual jump cables out and get connected to the word of the Lord, back to praying and fasting. Understand that we need to get charged. Our batteries are a little low. There's some things that we have dealt with personally, financially. There's things that's always coming at a situation, a circumstance, and you have to get reconnected. You have to get reconnected. And I know we have... Still in a pandemic, and this time during this pandemic where churches went to virtual versus in-person, and it was a change. For some of us, we enjoyed it. <laughs> and some of us became disconnected. <laughs> Y'all know why I'm like, which, guess what side I was on. But what I'm saying is that did call for some a disconnect because that was the way they stay charged by seeing their brothers and sisters in person. So we got to understand why some are saying, hey, I can roll over with my Mickey Mouse PJs on and say hallelujah, praise the Lord, right in the comfort of your bed. For some, it it caused them to feel a sermon because that was their outlet for Sunday morning. That was their outlet Wednesday night. So like I said, that's the thing. We got to get connected and charged again. We got to get recharged. You got to get that excitement back. You got to have that. I didn't tell the story, and I tell it this week before I go in. I can remember how excited I was um, from when my first official date with my wife. Little old school, I made sure I took the car to the car wash, shined it up. It was back now. Had the little air fresh in the tree hanging from the rear view. Clean. Had, I was clean. Not saying that I was not normally clean, but I was extra clean. Let's get that straight. Clean. I was ready to go. I was excited. First date. I don't know what these jokers do nowadays. I don't know they clean themselves up before the first day. But I was clean, ready to go. There was some miscommunication or something, and it didn't happen. But I was excited. <laughs> I was excited. I looked, I was excited. I had a zeal. Date time. And to this day, I still get excited about date day. And my wife will tell you. So that's the thing. Get that excitement back. Let's go into the lesson. Let's go into the lesson. Tonight's lesson is on refocus. Remember, read, to do it repeatedly, to start again. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Listen to the word of the Lord. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me. Listen, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Listen, Paul says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read it again, and if you don't shake, you don't quiver, you don't get excited, but you can see and feel where the Lord is taking them. Brethren, I count now myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth into those things which are before. I press 
towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. One thing, let me remind you of this, and this is one thing I tell people as often as I can. Let me give you the simple way your mind works. Many people tell you to forgive and forget. Your mind is not created that way to forget what has happened to you. I know the saying is to forgive and forget to basically to say let it go. That's what really is being said. But let me remind you how your mind works so you can understand this. This is how your mind works. Basic. Gather and store information to retrieve it at the appropriate time. Simple, simple way to look at this. It has happened to many of us. You're walking through the mall, you cut through Macy's, and you smell a good perfume, a good cologne. Mm, that smells good. You remember the smell. Three, four months later, you walking through the mall and smell that same cologne or perfume on somebody. Mm, that smells good. Your mind instantly tries to gather or go back to when you smelt it before. It's like when you have gone somewhere and you see somebody's face and you see it a couple times, grocery store, whatever. But when you see them outside or a different environment at the light of something, you look and say, they look familiar. What do your mind do? Go back to gather. How do I know them? Where did I see them? So understand, in this scripture, we're not telling you to forget the things you've been through. If y'all remember the lesson last year, you have to be, the scar is there to remind you of what you've been through and that you are a survivor. So Paul is not saying I forgot everything I went through, but I'm letting it go because there's somewhere I need to get to. And in the redo, if you do not refocus, you're going to be in the same spot. You know how many people are cheating on their present and their future because they won't let go of the past? He told you he was no good for you, <laughs> but you stay with me. He told you to your, your face. He wasn't getting any better. He wasn't doing any better. But some people are so afraid of being alone, they'd rather be in a toxic, damaging relationship. Refocus, refocus. So let's get in. Listen, focus is defined as the act of concentrating your interest or your activity on something. Listen, defined as the act of concentrating your interest or activity on something. Listen, in order to concentrate on one thing, by default, ignore Many other things. Now, I know many of us say, because I'm one of those people who say, I'm multitasking. <clears throat> yeah, we multitask, but everything is not getting the same amount of attention. That's true. Okay? So, in order to concentrate on one thing, you must default and ignore many other things. We're refocusing. Listen, when I was at McDonald's, I was in management there. I would attend a lot of training sessions and seminars. For some reason, they keep sending me training and things of that nature. I was in one seminar at one time, it was a teamwork and development seminar. And they said one statement that stuck with me for over 25 years. And that statement in that meeting was, be here now. And when they elaborated on it, it was that many times we're in places, but we're not there. What I'm encouraging in from this lesson, refocus, is whatever you go to do, make sure that you're there. Make sure that you take the time to be involved, to refocus. If you took the time to change your schedule, you took your time to save money to go, be there and enjoy it. It's just like I said, I had um, one of Rondell's quote that, I po that we posted on social media. I say it all the time and I believe it. If ministry is miserable, you're doing it wrong. Why would you want to do ministry and be miserable? Why would you want to be in a relationship and be miserable? Why would you want to go to a job and be miserable? I know they're paying. <laughs> but at the same time, you have to change your focus. Why am I here? What am I doing? I had to learn a long time ago, the reason why I show up, because he paid me. I stopped paying. Guess what? I stopped showing. I learned for a job to break it down, to understand the purpose of that job is to earn wages. If friendships happen... People become part of my inner circle. Great. But what happens is when you stand in between me and the wages, mm, mm. we leave that alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. He coming in a Honda. So understand, we have to understand to put things in the proper space. 
And when you do that and you prioritize properly, now you can focus better. So a better way to share this is this. Focus can only occur when you say yes to one option and no to all other options. Ooh, that's the tough one. Because guess what? We as humans like to have options. Have you heard men and women leaving my options open? We won't go further there. But we like the options. Because plan A don't work. Plan D might work. I'm leaving my options open. But listen, when it comes to focusing, I'll I say that again. A better way to share this is focus can only occur when you say yes to one option and no to all other options. The word of the Lord says it this way. This is what Jesus said, and I'm just repeating. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these other things I shall add unto you. When you put the Lord first, listen, you will not be last. Because what you have to understand is the Lord is going to take care of you because you chose him or made him the first option. My dad used to always tell me, he used to say, son, first things first. <laughs> for, for a while, I thought he was repeating himself till I got older and understand, do what you're supposed to do first and make things priority. Because what you're supposed to do last, you make that first. Guess what happened? When you get to the thing you should have done now, it could be too far gone. It's just like somebody, and I don't understand this. I haven't heard anybody do this. And if I do, trust me, I'm going to pull out my camera and get them on social media. It's like somebody selling their car for gas money. <laughs> when you get back with the gas to your car, what you going to put it in? <laughs> Same thing with us. When we prioritize and put things first, it works. It works. Listen, let me move on. To do focusing, to focus properly, Listen, elimination is a prerequisite for focusing. Ooh, we don't like that word. Elimination is required for focusing. Why? Because there's some things I'm going to have to cut out, let go, get rid of, so I can focus. Listen, elimination is the process of getting rid of something, whether it's waste, ooh, error, or conflict. If you had the time to put down a list of waste, error, and conflict, how many things in your life would wind up on that list? I'm talking about people, situations, family. But make sure, when I say family, I'm not talking about my family, but I'm just talking about in general. Family. Family, because this is the thing I've learned. The Lord chooses our family, we choose our friends. There's a reason why you're in that bloodline and why you have those siblings, those aunts, those uncles. So understand this. The Lord knows what he's doing. But elimination is required for focus. What am I going to move or get rid of so I can, so this can get my undivided attention? That question, you can answer. Because you know what's distracting you. Listen to this. When we learn to remove the mess, the foolishness, and the distraction and hindrances, we are able to move forward and the redos become less. We have to learn how to remove the mess, the foolishness, and the distractions. Move the obstacles out of the way and we'll be able to focus much better. In other words, keep the main thing the main thing. You have to understand that. And when I was doing this, the one song that came to mind is a song that all of us have heard so many times. I can sleep, see clearly now. The rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Many times when you're not focused and you have blurred vision, stuff is mixed. You don't see what's in front of you. You're not concentrated. And there's things that's distracting us. And the song says, gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. But guess what? It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. We have to learn how to move things out the way and focus. Because guess what? The devil don't want us to focus. The people in our life that's hating and negative and don't want us to get to the next level, don't want us to come with dream, they won't want you to focus. Have you ever had to deal with somebody that had their mind made up, good, bad, and different, how determined they was to get it done? You can't stop them. You can't determine why. Because my mind is made up. This is what I want to do. 
And in the redo, that's where it's very important because when you refocus, you're going to put yourself back on the right track, back on the right path. So listen, let's move on. Let's move on. See, we have to learn how to change the way we look at things. The Bible said to the pure, all things appear. To the defiled, all things are defiled. I'm learning before I jump and go to the negative, to the, the bad and the frustrating part, what good can I pull up? What are you trying to show me, Lord? See, this is what we have to learn how to do. We have to learn how to keep a positive outlook and have confident chatter. It's going to be better. Why is it going to be better? Because the Lord gave me the opportunity to redo. Many people, and it really bothered me. That's one of the things for this ministry, Restoration and Dominion Ministry. Our, 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 our slogan is restoring to a place of dominion. What really bothered me, and when people write people off, count them out. You done messed up the last 99 times, but the 100th time, I could get it right. And that's the God that we serve. He's merciful. He's kind. And he gives us time and time again. Yes, he's merciful, but there's always going to, there's going to be judgment. But he is so kind. He's not willing that any would perish, but all come to repentance. So we have to understand, you have to have a positive outlook. Yes, you had to start over again. Don't let nobody talk down to you. Don't let nobody criticize you or make you feel bad that you're starting over, that you're doing a redo. Please don't. Please don't. Why? I'm starting over. Okay. I didn't get it right. I learned a lesson, but the Lord is showing me something else. The Lord is saying, hey, I'm trying to get you to this level, but you got to learn and perfect this level. So you're going to have to start over. It, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Trust me, it's nothing wrong with it. Now, listen. This is why refocusing is very important because we have a lot of distractions, a lot of circumstances, a lot of situations in our life. When you start again, remember, be aware when you start again. This is very important. Make sure you are aware of what caused you to lose your focus. Many are in denial what caused them to get off track. Because when you address that, you might have to eliminate that. And sometimes the elimination... As people in our circle. Sometimes that elimination is somebody that's been telling you the last five, ten years they're going to marry. Let's be real. Sometimes that elimination might be family members that's been draining you dry. Not that I don't love you, but I have to get refocused. I have to make sure I get on the right path. Because why? In my redo, I already got enough nerve to restart. I had to get past myself because I had to start over. I'm charged now. I made up my mind we're going to get it done. Now I'm refocusing. As soon as I refocus, now you come with something stupid. Do y'all remember Johnson family? That one family member? Hey, let me hold something. <laughs> you doing good. Told you to do that. That one person that no matter how much you get, how high you go, they're always drained. They're always poor. Not that you don't want to help. But I'm trying to stay focused. Now listen, listen, listen. When, oh, no, I'm sorry. This is what you need to remember. 2 Corinthians, the abbreviation, C-O-R. <laughs> Inside joke, you had to be here. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get the advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Mm -hmm. Listen, Satan does not fight fair. Satan would get you off track through the dog if he could. You have a rough day, come home, and the goldfish is just swimming, and you look at the goldfish like, why are you looking at me like that? Satan, don't, it don't matter to Satan who he used. He just wants you off track, off base for a few moments for you to get beside yourself, say something crazy, say something stupid. Now you look in there. You have to repent to the Lord because you didn't have discipline. He doesn't care how long you're off the track because that time you're off the track might be the time is up. So you understand, he uses anything to get you off track. He wants you to miss the mark. He doesn't fight fair, and he has no rules. If Satan had a tattoo, the tattoo would say, by any means necessary. <laughs> he don't care. He would do that. You have to understand that. See, listen to this. See, when you are focused, you are sharp. You are alert. You're sure and you're productive. Why? Because I'm focused. I got a goal in mind, a dream in mind. I got somewhere I need to be. And I'm focused. 
if that person is you that's focused on doing more for ministry, if you're focused on buying a house, starting a business, having a healthy, strong relationship and marriage, if that's you, you got to stay focused. But when you're focused, you're sharp, you're alert. Things ain't creeping in. Why? Because I'm more productive. Because why? Why am I more productive? Eliminated the things that are distracting. What, what did we say? Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press towards the mark for the prize. Not that you forgot, but I'm letting them go. It was a lesson for me to learn, and now it's time for me to move forward. Don't worry, we're almost done. Listen to this. This is one thing Lord told me last night. If you give it your presence, you should consider, consider giving it your attention. If you took the time to be there, give it your give it the time to pay attention. You took the time to show up. Make it worth the while. Y'all know how some of us were and still are. You wasn't going to the party to be no wallflower. It's just like somebody. Some people do it. I ain't mad at them. But most people don't go to the theme park to sit at the gate and watch everybody. Look, you getting on some type of rap. You yelling, screaming, doing something. So that's I say that to you again. For those that join us in rehab and those that join us for more manifestation, even if you're attending another church, another ministry, listen, if, if, you, if you gave it your presence, you might want to consider giving it your attention. That goes back to what I said earlier. Be here now. Be there. Take the time. For our rehab sessions, we are here literally for just 50 minutes to an hour. Very time focused. But when we're here, we're trying to make the most of it. Same way. Your relationship, your marriage, your relationship with your children, your co if you're going to you're going to give it, give it your all. Be present there. Okay, listen. This is something else. Focus does not require a permanent no. Listen, focus does not require a permanent no. But it does require a present no. There's at times where you got to say no. But it's no for now because what's in front of me or what the goal or what the task is, I must complete. So now it's a no. But later it could be a yes because why? At that time, I was focused. This was what was in front of me. And we have to understand that. I had to learn that. We've done it, those of us that had children, is that sometimes you said no. They kept warning you. They kept warning you until they got a yes. But what I've learned, <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> but what I've learned is this. Some people treat the Lord like that. The Lord, they didn't hear from the Lord. They didn't hear from the Lord, so they automatically feel, well, he didn't say anything, so that must be a yes. No. <laughs> every every um, delay is not a denial. There's times where the Lord have us in a holding path. It's not safe for you to land. So I'm going to hold you there until the atmosphere change, the environment change. I don't want you to land because it's not safe. So I'm holding you and keep you in a place because it's not your season to land. It's not your season for you to come down or for you to go up. Amen. So understand this. Focus does not require a permanent no, but it does require a present, a permanent no, but it does require a present no. You have the option to do something else later, but the present moment focus required, the present moment of focus requires you do one thing. Many people say, I'm getting more done because I'm multitasking. It has been proven through studies and all that that you're not getting more done because everything is not getting the same amount of attention, the same amount of energy. One of the things that's very important for us, for all of us to learn, is that we have to learn how to be organized and to plan and to keep our word. Nothing worse if you plan a date day, you plan a family day, have the time and all that, and but then because of poor planning, poor organization, that's canceled. I say this all the time. People get a little look at me funny, but I enjoy the time I spend with my wife and my children because the fact of life is, is I don't know how much time I have them and they don't have know how much time they have me. But the time we're given, we're making the most of it, and I'm learning and practicing to be here now because that's reality. 
It's always like, oh, you're being so serious, but that's real. Tomorrow's not promised to no one. So while I have today, I'm doing what the Lord has called me to do, and I'm making the best of it. Let me move on. Understand the reason why we need to focus on one thing is because we're not like Jesus. We're not omnipresent. You can only be at one place at one time. And even if you have a twin, that is still not you. That is somebody totally different. So you have to understand is that you're only one person. You can only do one thing at a time. And you have to learn to learn how to say yes and learn how to say no. You can't be poured in so many different directions. You have to focus on what's in front of you. Now listen to this. Why can't I focus? Very simple, not too deep. Most people don't have a trouble, don't have trouble with focusing. They have trouble with making a decision. <laughs> now listen. Mm-hmm. Most human brains are capable of focusing if we get the distractions out of the way. Listen, distraction is the process diverting the attention of an individual or group from a desired area of focus and thereby blocking or diminishing the reception of desired information. A distraction is there to change your focus and try to change your desires or your course. Listen to this. If you had a task before you and you got it done, you might have got it done because the deadline made the decision for you. Say, what? Yes, the deadline made the decision. Maybe you procrastinated for a while. But once it became urgent, once you became close to the deadline, it forced you to make a decision. You took action. We have to learn to make decisions and try to make good decisions over poor decisions. Now, this is the thing I come to learn. If you make a poor decision or a bad decision, try your best not to beat yourself up over it. We're human. We make mistakes. And one of the things people laugh at me, but I'm an honest pastor. What I used to do when I was not as mature as I am now, I will make the decision and then pray to the Lord to make sure that, pray to the Lord, help me with the decision I made. It's like, hey, I done made this decision. I helped you out. Now can you bless it? But the Bible does not say that. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct my path. The problem with us is we're here. We want to control. We want to do fast. We want to do quick. Lord, you're taking too long to deliver me. You're taking too long to heal me. I got things to do. I got places to be. Lord, get me out of this situation. But if the Lord did that every time, when will we learn how to stay on our knees and pray? When will we learn patience? When will we, when will we learn how to suffer? The Bible said, you suffer with me. The Lord said, you suffer with me, then you will reign. Some of us have to, some of us forget that it's the valley experiences that caused us to really be thankful and enjoy when the mountaintop. See, the valley is where the richest soil is. But in the valley, there's a, there's a chance that the valley is not always safe. You can't see from every side what's coming to attack you. But in the valley is where you learn how to trust them and lean and depend on them. So you have to understand that even though you made some decisions that have you in the valley, I'm refocusing. Because soon I'm going to be back on the mountaintop. You have to understand it. So we have to make sure that we make good decisions. Anybody understand and say, I have never made a wrong or bad decision? I'm telling you now, they are a liar. Okay? I'm telling you that. The Bible said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're human. We make mistakes. I'm not encouraging us to do wrong, but many people... Many people will throw you to the side. Many people say they know good because they made a poor decision. One thing I say as I get ready to close is that one of the things I have said, I don't know how many times, one of the reasons why I love the Lord Jesus Christ so much because he really loves me. Rondell. The Rondell y'all do see and the Rondell y'all don't see, not in a negative way, But he loves me for me. 
Because if some people saw who you really were, you would be blocked, your phone number would be deleted, and you would not have a table, you would not have a seat at the lunch table. But the Lord loves me and died for me before he even created me. So understand, that's one of the reasons I think it gives me a, another chance to get right. As I get ready to close, remember this. Keep your eye on the prize. No matter the lies that's been told, the mistakes, the hurt, and the pain, or the scars, refocus. Pick yourself up. Dust yourself off. Check out the scars. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to mention the name. Oh, Sun Sun gave me that. Sun Sun gave me that. Look up. Hold your head high. I'm moving forward. Because I have somewhere to be. One of my favorite songs that is sung by Jonathan McReynolds and Molly Music. It's a part in a stanza that just calls me to just, just like, thank you, Jesus. It's not a lot. It says, I know my rear view can't compare to what God would do in my life. Some of us are crashing, taking the wrong exit because we, we got our eyes in the rear view mirror so concerned about what's going on behind us. Miss your exit. You're late to your vacation because you're too busy looking behind. The past is there to teach you, to help you learn the lesson. But what you ought to say is what we should say is when the devil bring that situation, that circumstance or that person back around, I see you devil, you're trying it again. That device, that situation won't work because I'm focused and I'm prepared. Because even if I have to do a redo, it's okay. But this situation, this circumstance, I'm planning on not redoing or starting over. So uh, listen to this. Listen to this. You have to stay focused. You have to eliminate the distractions. There's some things you got to make a decision. You got to make a decision. You got to understand the Lord is doing some things. Listen as I read the scripture for tonight and we will be closing. Paul says, brethren, I can't now myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things, letting go, putting them in their place that which are behind me and reaching forth to those things which are before I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. The prize is in front of you, not behind you. The average person don't run a marathon backwards. Let me know when you see it, because show me the video. <clears throat> Where you're going is in front of you. Stop cheating on your present and your past. Your present and your present and your future because of your past. I say this and people, if you are not doing it now, you're not practicing in your present, it's not who you are. People will remember who you were, but don't take the time to know who you are. I might not be all that I should be, but I'm much further than what I used to be. Back in the day, the time you got the last syllable out, and that means for some, that hand might already be up against your face. Now, you might be able to finish the sentence. <laughs> then the hand might be up to face. Not me, but just some folk. People are growing. People are working process. So before you discount them, before you throw them away, they're still on the pot's way. Please, put your hands together and give the Lord a praise for refocus. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for those that join us through Facebook, YouTube, for taking time out. Please take time to sow into the ministry. You can sow through Cash App. You can visit our website, rndministries.org. R and A and D and D ministries.org. Go to our donate page. There you can find more information. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Please, YouTube, subscribe. We're a ministry that restoring to a place of dominion. Thank you. Share, like. Please let somebody know about Restoration and Dominion Ministry. Can we give the Lord another?